For almost a 50 year period after World War II, there was a massive tension between the US and its allies in the Soviet Union. There was no outright war in this time period, but it's known as the Cold War. And it was known as the Cold War because it wasn't a hot and active war, there were no battles going on physically, but instead there was a battle of wits. And at the core of this battle was two differing opinions on how an economic system in a country should be run, namely communism in the Soviet Union and capitalism in the US. Though the Cold War is now over, obviously with the winners per se being the US and Western democracy, there is still an ongoing conflict between the sides of capitalism and communism, even more so with just every other system against capitalism. If you go to any YouTube video about either of the two topics, you will find millions of people who are capitalist and millions who are not. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it to capitalist versus communist. As a disclaimer for all the communists out there, I'm not talking about the so-called true communism that we have never and will never see where everything works out in the end. I'm talking about what you would refer to as highly authoritarian socialism, but for everybody else just communism. The main argument against communism from a broader sense is that communism does not promote an incentive to work or be innovative. While on paper it seems like a good system, there's a reason that communism has never really worked among an entire country's population. I'll say that communism is the best system to have among a group of your five friends. The only way to split stuff among you guys should be equally, and there's always someone to keep you in check when you're either slacking off or taking more than your cut. But with the Soviet Union, it didn't work not because of creativity, but something else as well. And that reason is government corruption. The way that the system worked on paper was that the government would collect revenue from all businesses and redistribute it among the people, keeping the economic status equal, as it were. But the way that it worked out in the end of the day was that government officials ended up taking a large, large majority of the product and income for themselves, leaving the majority of people with just crumbs. Many, many people in the Soviet Union died of starvation, and a lot more died from being forced to work to provide more money to the system. It's estimated around 30 million people died from communist genocides of the Soviet Union. But I'll still argue that the point that was most important to the argument of capitalism versus communism is the lack of communist creativity. In the video game field, for one, the mass poverty of the Soviet Union made it very hard to have PCs that could run and program games. And also the life that civilians were living at the time did not afford time to be creative in that way making video games. This is referenced by the fact that the only game that many of us know from the Soviet Union is Tetris, and even that was made by a guy who wanted out of the Soviet Union. Capitalism was and still is so much better for the production of movies, music, TV shows, and the point of this video video games. The fundamental message behind capitalism is that you reap what you sow, whatever you make will be compensated accordingly, or at least that's what it's supposed to be. This process of capitalism has allowed businesses in the US to grow and achieve unfathomable numbers and allowed the US as a whole to have the highest GDP in the world. And this is especially true in the video game field. The US has the highest amount of annual revenue from video games out of any country in the world. Money, bitch. Welcome to the US of A, where we value you video games, burgers, and uh, mass shootings apparently. When you think of the top video game franchises in the world, more often than not they come out of the US and it's now allied countries like Japan and the UK. Call of Duty, Mario, Pokemon, all highest grossing game franchise, all coming from capitalist nations. And those best selling games came to a head in 2016 on the release of Overwatch. From 2016 into the end of the 2010s and the early 2020s, Overwatch dominated the player base. On average, the game based out of the American company Activision Blizzard had around 40 million players and reached daily peaks of around 2 million concurrent players every month. It's safe to say that the game was a smash hit, and the game really solidified Blizzard as a company that wouldn't fade out after World of Warcraft stopped becoming relevant. But every year the player base started to dwindle down a little bit due to the lack of the game fixing updates, releasing new game modes, or just burnout of boredom with the game. In addition, after releasing Overwatch, Blizzard went on a run of releasing games that were either underwhelming or just blatant cash grabs. Take Diablo Immortal, for example. How much money do you think it would cost to max out a character in Diablo Immortal? Surely, if we're talking about money being a replacement for time, it would be around $100, right? Okay, well, not $100, but it can't be much more than, like, an all-top-level ranked MLB The Show team, right? So around $500, maybe? Still too low? I mean, it can't be around the top tier Counter-Strike inventories, right? I mean, those are absurdly expensive. I mean, there's a whole market engineered around these items. 
So it has to be like, I don't know, a thousand dollars, which is way too much for one character, but I guess I can afford it if I really wanted it. What? Still too low? I mean, how much could it be? 100,000 to 500,000 dollars? I'm likely never gonna see that kind of money in my life ever. What kind of, you know what, never mind. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked off of the point of this video. It seems like Diablo Immortal is an outlier, so let's just go back to Overwatch. Around late 2019, when Overwatch is really seeing the beginning of a decline in players, Blizzard announced the release of Overwatch 2. Among gameplay fixes to fix the current meta, the game was also announced with a full campaign mode sporting new PvE elements and abilities to level up and master. Which is a great idea, right? I mean, another point for capitalism, the US does it again. Blizzard continues to innovate these games. But then you start to see these cracks. First you see the PvE mode get delayed. This is a huge selling point for many of us who got bored with the gameplay loop of Overwatch over time. And then you see that the main gameplay really hasn't changed at all, apart from a couple ability changes and new characters. This was the spawn of the uh, meme, the Overwatch 1.5. Now people are looking at Blizzard like, have you done anything to warrant a new release? And then they announce a battle pass, which is like, yeah, battle passes suck, but for every game nowadays, you gotta have one, so you guys can thank Fortnite for that. But then in May of 2023, Blizzard drops a bombshell. They announced that Overwatch 2's campaign PvE mode is so unfinished that it has been canceled, effectively making it so there was no reason to make a second game in the first place. This was such a letdown that neither myself nor any of my friends have had Overwatch 2 installed since this announcement. It basically means that all of the hype that was garnered for this game was for no reason. There was just a gameplay patch and a couple ability gimmicks, there was no reason to make an entire second game. There's more creativity happening with Overwatch porn animators than there is with the actual Blizzard game devs. Think of it in another industry, right? Say, what if Taylor Swift released a sequel album to Red? And she says it'll be a new 16 song album with an additional 16 songs added for her fans. And then two years down the road, the album comes out and it's just the 16 original songs from Red's instrumentals, but every verse she changes a word or two, and the additional 16 songs just never came out. Do you think Taylor Swift's fans would be happy with that? Well actually with Swifties, yeah they probably would. They'd probably call it the album of the year and then take it to social media to attack anybody who criticizes the lack of creativity in the album and tell them that they'll never amount to anything in life. Okay, maybe not them, but any other artists? Hell no, no they wouldn't. But with Blizzard and Overwatch 2, this still works for them as a company because they can just cut ties and run with the money. At the end of the day, the game is still gonna be profitable. Again, the main point of capitalism over communism is the promotion of innovation and creativity that capitalism has. But nowadays with companies like Blizzard or Activision as a whole or Riot or Epic or whoever, the money isn't made with a good game, the money is made with skins and cosmetics, things that don't affect the quality of the game at all. That's not innovative, it's not creative, it certainly isn't how a capitalist would envision the you reap what you sow mentality. Except now it's becoming that that is how they would see it. Capitalism in the entertainment industry is on a downward trend because companies are starting to realize that they don't really have to change that much to make money if they already have a big name in the game. It's the same reason the Oakland A's and the MLB have zero good players and cut costs from everything from a stadium renovation to promotions and still make millions of dollars in profit. Is this the same capitalism that prevailed in the Cold War? Basically what I'm trying to say in this video is that Overwatch 2 is the product of what happens when a business realizes that they don't even have to try to make money to make money. It had such a great start in its release and it, there was so much potential in a game like this and it's a shame to see that the game relevance nowadays is carried by Pornhub.